Good evening, everyone. It's Paul at the Garland County Library, and I'm here with Mary Zunick, who is the Hot Springs Cultural Affairs Manager with the Cultural Alliance. And believe it or not, we are on episode 13 of the Gallery Walk Talk series. And I cannot believe it's been that many episodes, but you have been selecting the best artists and, and bringing great content, Mary. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be on here. Thank you for this program and for all that the library does to, um, you know, help us be creative through the pandemic and find ways to still gather together and celebrate our art here in Hot Springs and many other topics. I know that you've covered uh, with the programming of the library. So just thank you for including Gallery Walk as a monthly uh, a monthly part of those that programming. Of course. And in just a moment, our special guest tonight is Linda Williams Palmer. And um, I encourage you, if you enjoy this program, to uh, go back and watch some of the previous episodes that you might have missed. Last month, we had Amy Bramlett Turner, who is the uh, dance troupe director over at the Hot Springs School District. And the month before that, we had popular local watercolor instructor and artist, uh, Mr. Richard Stevens, and let me see if I can find this little flyer here because I have an announcement about Richard Stevens. The library just opened registration for his annual watercolor workshop. It's going to happen here in mid-March. It's a three-day commitment, March 16th through 18th, and uh, there is a $25 fee due at registration, and that covers all three days, and I can tell you that is a great deal because uh, some watercolor workshops can run in the triple digits. So um, there is limited availability for this class. So if, if you enjoy this, give the library a call or come see us because the $25 fee is due at registration and there's special instructions, but it'll be pretty simple. So don't miss your chance to sign up for that. And uh, Mary, I'm going to turn it over to you. I know uh, before we introduce our special guest, uh, you have a, a few remarks you'd like to make, as always, about Gallery Walk and what's going on with that. So thanks for joining us. Have a great program. Thank you so much, Paul. Yeah, you mentioned uh, 13 episodes of that of this program to talk about Gallery Walk, but 13 episodes is nothing compared to the over 32 years, I think, of Gallery Walk. Every single month, the first Friday evening of the month in downtown Hot Springs. Um, the galleries keep their doors open late and invite the public in. Um, many instances, there are artists attending um, openings of new exhibits. It's just a wonderful time to be in downtown Hot Springs. And um, we hope that you will, that you will all uh, plan on coming out for Gallery Walk on Friday evening, March 4th. And um, so just March 4th downtown and uh, check out Gallery Walk. Um, this episode of Gallery Walk, we have even some extra special opening exhibits and special features around town. I'll share some of those with you this evening. But um, the Hot Springs Area Cultural Alliance, um, the, kind of the culmination of the year-long efforts uh, is Arts in the Park. And that will begin, it's a spring festival, 10 days filled with art every single spring, and it kicks off the end of May. Well, as as many people know, um, to put together an arts festival, it takes some money. And so we are sponsoring a fundraiser prior to that on April 23rd. But the big thing that's going to be taking place there is um, the Adirondack chair auction. It's called Hot Seats and Hot Springs. Um, several months ago, the Cultural Alliance commissioned an Arkansas artist, uh, artisan, to create 13 Adirondack chairs beautiful handcrafted Adirondack chairs. Um, and then the call for artists was issued for artists to submit plans for what they propose or what their idea of the these chairs should be, how they should be painted. And so many, many um, submissions were received. A panel of jurors came in and evaluated the submissions and 15 artists were selected. So for the past several weeks, those 15 artists have had possession of the chairs and they have been creating original pieces of artwork on those chairs 
Well, the time, the deadline has come and those artists have now returned the chairs and they will be in galleries on Friday night. So Friday evening, not only will you get to see the um, artwork in the galleries, you'll get to see the exhibits of these chairs. So uh, please, please come out, plan on coming down Friday evening and seeing those chairs. Um, and they are beautiful. Some local artists, uh, as well as, uh, I'm, in fact, I'm going to pull out my slides here. Whoops. Let's see here. Paul, would you mind pulling up the slides? You'll need to switch your tab. Um, I have your screen shared, but you'll need to go to the. Okay, I'm sorry. Are we there? Am I still here? You are still on the screen where you can okay. see. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, so let's. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me through technical difficulties. Okay. So let's get started. Um, and I want to show you the pictures of the slides. This is just one of the slides of local artist Roxy Rose and her sweet hound dog there. Um, but this one is beautiful, Arkansas natives, but there are themes from music to nature to hot springs. The theme of this, um, the of Arts in the Park this year is um, cultural roots or creative roots of where, how we draw inspiration from our collective culture, our individual cultures, and how that can be expressed through artwork. So you can see here that Roxy is certainly inspired by our beautiful native Arkansas wild flowers. So um, come on out and check that out. Um, but just to highlight some of the galleries um, that will be taking part in Gallery Walk this month, the warehouse, it's kind of like its own little arts festival. Um, different artists come and set up their live music. Um, Jeeper uh, does a great job at the warehouse of making it some little bit different every month and lots of local artists celebrated there. Um, next door to the warehouse is the newest gallery in Hot Springs, Esther's Gallery and Gifts. Um, local artists, uh, Don Watson, Wayne Summerhill, um, and I know there's even some exciting new artists since um, last month. Uh, Ryan Rooney, local Arca or local Hot Springs artist, will have his um, uh, work hanging there at Esther's. So um, that if you start off down on Broadway and then come on up, if you make it to Central Avenue, Legacy Fine Art Gallery. Um, I think they may even have two chairs at Legacy Fine Art Gallery of the um, Adirondack chairs. But in addition to um, the chairs, of course, um, Legacy's incredible um, collection of artwork uh, will be featuring Stephen Harlan this month, um, known for his color and dramatic nautical themes. As you can see there, um, they just seem to glow. Beautiful artwork. And then on down from Legacy Galleries, All Things Arkansas. Um, All Things Arkansas has, um, in addition to their wonderful uh, artisan or handcrafted items from across the state um, and uh, artwork, there'll be live music with Ben Carey. So you can enjoy some of a local um, Hot Springs performer, Ben Carey, performing there at All Things Arkansas. American Art Gallery has a brand new look when you drive down mm -hmm. Hot Springs. It's our oldest gallery in Hot Springs. Been open, it's been open since the very beginning. And um, Ann and Willie Gilbert, um, this month, they will be featuring um, Knives by Claude Lambert. Um, various artists there, Jamie Carter, Jimmy Leach, um, even Kincaid Studios, an entire gallery of work by Thomas Kincaid. Um, and some wonderful Native American art uh, there as well. So um, stop on into American Art Gallery. Um, and I have the wrong title on that slide. I apologize. I think that's the first time I've done this. But as you can see, that is clearly Artist Workshop Gallery. Um, Artist Workshop Gallery is a collection of many different artists that come together um, and uh, you know, they each work in the gallery and uh, uh, the, the exhibits are different every single month. And um, 
I apologize for the for the wrong title there, but um, just you can see a whole variety of different artists and jewelry, all different types of mediums um, there at Artist Workshop Gallery. Um, Gallery Central, um, many people remember it from when it was further down Central Avenue there, um, where our guest artist um, had her gallery for many years too, mm -hmm. who, who will uh, be talking with Linda here in a little bit, but Gallery Central is now on the first floor of the Waters Hotel. And the Waters Hotel will be featuring one of our Adirondack chairs as well. So um, it'll be there in the lobby of the hotel. On around the corner on Whittington Street, um, I mentioned that American Art Gallery is our oldest gallery, but Dryden Pottery is probably our oldest studio in Hot Springs. Um, they've been um, in business and creating beautiful artwork in Hot Springs for over 75 years. Um, you can see these beautiful pieces created by Zach Dryden, and you cannot miss the building. Um, it's beautiful. There's no guess at what goes on in Dryden Gallery. So stop in there um, and they will have several of the chairs there at Dryden Gallery as well. Circle Gallery is part of Emergent Arts. Um, the Emergent Arts features all different types of programming from the young to the young at heart. If you want to learn about um, how to create different types of art and writing, um, their exhibit at Circle Gallery is Objet Trouvé, Trouvé, I didn't take French, um, so I apologize for the mispronunciation there. Found objects, so using found objects, which in this case are old window frames, um, and creating something new and beautiful from that. At Circle Gallery, you can see work by Anne Greenwood, Deborah Fitzgerald, Jen Malone, Jen, and Jenna White. They all, all have pieces there. And um, another gallery there, let me go back to um, Emergent Arts there, on Whittington Avenue or is a Whittington Gallery. And Rust Rustina Green is a self-taught artist. She will be the um, featured artist there um, who paints from emotions and life experiences. She sold all art all over the U.S., um, also shown in Mexico, Canada, and even Denmark. So um, while you're you stop off at Dryden Gallery Central, and then, of course, at Whittington Gallery as well. And then I'm going to finish up my slides here at Justice Fine Art Gallery. Um, Justice Dolores Justice is the owner. So, of course, you can see some work by Dolores Justice. Um, but this ex the exhibit this month shall be Welcoming Spring. Um, will feature selections by Susan Baker Chambers, dramatic paintings of garden gardens, along with watercolor paintings of nests by birds and nests. Gary Simmons has done extensive, um, uh, produced extensive artwork using with birds. And so it's wonderful to, it'll be, I'm excited to see his exhibit of nests. And um, now I'm going to, if we can pull off of the screen here, I'm going to introduce our guest artist this evening, um, Linda is joining me this evening and Linda's artwork can be also be seen at Justice Fine Art Gallery. So Paul, in fact, that's one of Linda's pieces there on the on the slide. Paul, if you wouldn't mind. Um, here we are. OK, let's see. Let's get situated and see if I can move get moved um, so that we are both in the picture here. How oh, should we? Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. We go this way. Yes, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> just go with me. We're dancing we here. here. Um, Linda, Linda Williams Palmer is joining me this evening. Um, Linda, um, we're just, instead of me reading your bio, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just ask you a few questions. And here, this will probably walk a little bit too. I'm thinking of seeing a little box. So busy out there. Um, so Linda is her your artwork is a Justice Gallery. Now tell us how how when was the first time you painted? Tell me, take me all the way back. When did you first want to become an artist? I loved drawing from the very beginning, even in the first grade when I had spare time. I um, I drew my own paper dolls. And I drew. Nice. I grew up in Oklahoma, so of course I drew cowboys and horses. <laughs> so that, uh, but the first time I saw 
an artist's work in oil painting was when I was a student in high school. There was no art taught in uh, Oklahoma, in Chicago, where I grew up at that time. But my best girlfriend's mother was taking oil painting. And I remember going in and seeing her work and just thinking, someday I'm going to be able to do that. That was the first experience. And now, where did you go from high school? What was your path after high school? Um, I actually went on a vocal scholarship to Oklahoma Baptist University. So I started out in the arts, more in music as a vocalist. Mm -hmm. So, and now I've been married, moved to, Hot, to Fort Smith, raised my family, but, and I have four children, uh, twins. The second, oh. the second pregnancy was twins. Oh, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, and, they're, and it's wonderful. Turned out great. I have two sons and two daughters. Just perfect. Um, but when I finally got the youngest, in high school, and I had some time to myself. I, I, a friend of mine said, Linda, I can see you really you're serious about art. Why don't you enroll in West Art Community College because they have a great art department? And so I got my nose off, you know, and went in to talk to the art professor. And I said, you know, I don't have much time. I can only take one course at a time oh, with the time that I have. Yeah. And I don't care about, you know, anything as far as a degree, but I just want to learn about art. He said, that's what I want to hear, but you have to take it for credit. I said, okay, that's fine. I'll do yeah. that. My one <laughs> course. <laughs> I did this for four years. Oh, taking wow. one art class at a time and took every course they had in art. Did you just print making, at a time? print making, painting? I mean, I just did go it. It was it was fabulous. I loved it. I really didn't want to quit, but I thought maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> and now, during that period of time between high school and college, and when you um, went on, did you have any inkling in the back of your mind that you wanted to be an artist at some point? I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to be able to take classes or do something. But uh, I was very busy with music and with singing. Um, but when I enrolled in the art class, all of a sudden it was like, I, this is what I've been looking for. Now, which was your favorite, or did you discover something that was kind of your favorite while you were there? One of the mediums, or one of the experiences that really stood out? Not really. I I really loved the drawing class, and I felt like I learned more about our basics um, with drawing. But then I took oil paintings, and then. Um, printmaking, which I like, but was a little too technical for me. And then you have to have the press and everything like that. Uh, it wasn't until maybe along the last that I was doing a special projects course. Mm -hmm. And I was working with landscape and working with pencil. But then I wanted some color. Mm -hmm. So it was all graphite drawings, but I wanted color. So um, I switched over to oils, but I lost the feel of the pencil. And so I was very frustrated. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a friend of mine, and another artist, and he said, Linda, why don't you try these Prismacolor colored pencils? Because I think that's what you're looking for. And he said, they've been used by architects for years, and it's really fun. So I did. And I uh, started uh, experimenting with what I could do with the colored <clears throat> with the colored pencils, and that is kind of how I started with the pencil work. But I still worked in watercolor, you know, right. painting different mediums. And um, 
Well, I'll tell you what, you've talked about it. Let's start looking at some, some other, right. and I'll, I'll throw some, some, I'll pepper some other okay. bio questions in there too. And okay, some other. that's fine. And uh, so Paul, I'm going to switch over to my slideshow now. This one, oh, whoops, sorry. this one is a favorite of mine that I just did last year during COVID. Uh -huh. And uh, um, it's a photograph, and I work from my own photographs. I take photographs of, of uh, things that capture my interest. And this was a site on the road that I would see going back and forth to Fort Smith uh -huh. to visit my family. Finally, I stopped and asked the people if I could photograph it because I love the tree and, and the tree house and everything. So uh, this is one of my recent ones. That is, and it's the sycamore. The sycamore. And now, so I guess in the summer, it, you, it, it, it you don't see it as well. Right. So oh, wow. The so you capture it. that. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Water Tupelo, and this is one of the largest trees, and it is a champion tree, okay. and it's one of the largest on the champion tree list. Not the largest, but one of the largest. Um, it, let me interrupt you okay. to say, what is a champion tree? The champion tree is the biggest tree, not necessarily the oldest, mm -hmm. but the biggest tree that is on record in the state and uh, it has to have been officially measured by the Arkansas foresters mm -hmm. and uh, so and they come up with the bigness index and that is what decides which tree is the largest is the one with the bigness index okay and so this is the water too below mm -hmm. So it is, that's the, that's the type of tree it is. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've never and, heard of a water tree below. Well, uh, a lot, uh, it's very often seen in water. Okay. And this one, you can see where the water level was. And this one was located in the Bald Knob um, National Wildlife Area. And it was featured in the documentary Champion Trees. And there's a very interesting story about it because we, um, um, they asked me to choose a tree to go out and photograph and kind of where they could film and show what I did. And I thought, smart me here. I thought, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose one that's way back in, you know, in the forest that normally I couldn't find, but they'll locate it for me. Well, <laughs> that I outsmarted myself because it was a mile back into this very, very uh, uh, dense forest and it was in the middle of the summer and there was no breeze uh, <laughs> and there was a big adventure with it, but it was a magnificent tree and I'm, I am very glad that I was able to see it. That is beautiful. I love how you capture it coming up. Mm -hmm. About is the water that water or is that the earth? Down this below? was actually mud mm -hmm. because we had to wait until, uh, and that was one of the reasons it was in the summer. Uh, we had to wait until the water uh, went down around it, so it was muddy. But um, at the at the time we saw it, it wasn't. And the coast oak uh, was another wonderful experience uh, that I have been so fortunate to to do. It's in Waldo, uh, which was a small area. And uh, I met with the owner of this tree and we sat for about an hour until the lighting got on the tree the way I was wanting. And he told me about the whole history of that area. Uh, a real bonus for me during this tree project, project was the fact that um, it also included history and the people of Arkansas and the people that loved their trees, but the history 
all the many years that happened around these trees, because many of them, if they're champions, they're some, they are the oldest, but they're some of the biggest. And so years, hundreds, sometimes hundreds of years, I think we decided this one was probably 200 years old. So, yeah, the life, the life, the, the, the feet that have walked mm -hmm. underneath it. Mm -hmm. And now, okay, so you mentioned the Champion Trees Project. So, and, and we saw the, the a couple of uh, images here of artwork that you've done, but tell us about what the Champion Tree Project was. I have always loved trees uh, from the time I was five years old playing out in the woods. Trees were very special to me. So, of course, and when I started as an artist, trees were a very important uh, subject matter for me. Um, the Champion Tree Project, I had never heard of the Champion Trees, and I most people haven't. Know. Uh, but I had photographed this amazing tree uh, one day, and there's a complete story about how that happened also. But um, I came back and I ran into Jean Wallace, who was our Parks and Recreation yes. Director and a lover and protector of trees. So I said, Jean, you're just not going to believe this tree I just found, and da 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 da. And she said, well, Linda, if it's that big and that beautiful, it must be on the champion tree list. And I said, what are you talking about? And she explained to me that I could go uh, get on my computer, go to the uh, Arkansas Forestry website, and pull up champion trees. And she said, I bet that tree is on the list. And it was. And as I looked at that list, I thought, Today was so much fun, and this was so fabulous. I'm going to just start looking for more of these trees and come back to my studio and do drawings, and maybe someday I'll, you know, I'll have a whole show of big champion trees. Oh, how wonderful. And you certainly And did. so that happened. <laughs> so it's for the next five years, I did this. It took five years, and I traveled... I stopped counting when it got to 20,000 miles around oh, the state of Arkansas. What an adventure. It was. In search of trees. A wonderful adventure. And so now, where was this post oak along the journey? Was it near the beginning or? About in the middle. About in the middle. Mm -hmm. And okay, where's Baldo? <laughs> I oh resist. dear, let's see. Near Texarkana. Okay. In that area of the state. Oh, wow, look at the movement in that one. Now, speaking of Texarkana, that's where this tree is. Oh, this is a great lead in. Um, this southern magnolia, of course, many people think the champion magnolia is at Old Washington because that magnolia fills two acres, I think. But it has multiple trunks, so it cannot, you know. You have to have the singular trunk oh. to measure and everything. So it's disqualified. This one is amazing. It's old. Um, it's still standing. It's on, I think, right off of their main street. Um, and you can see all the color variations of the leaves on the neck. Oh, yeah. I think they're so beautiful anyway. Those waxy leaves, and you can really see the waxy leaves. In this. And the roots of the magnolias, the way they come up out of the ground, usually just fascinated me. And this one was wonderful. Um, and it's featured in the documentary, and it's actually shown with children coming up and running around it, oh, which I love that scene. Nice. Now, now, are all of the trees in the documentary, all of the trees that you did? No, no, not all of them, uh, but many of them are. Okay, now tell us about the documentary real quick. The During um, this project, and I had completed about 17 of these large drawings, uh, Dorothy Morris happened to see them, and I really didn't know Dorothy that well at the time, but she said, this just needs to be a documentary because it's art, it's history, 
its nature. And I know just the people to do it because I've worked with them before. And she said, I'm just going to make a um, uh, talk to them and have you go to your PowerPoint and tell them all about it. And they're going to love it. And they'll do a documentary and I'll raise the money and it's going to win all kinds of awards. And that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> She's a woman of her word. Now, where could somebody watch it? Uh, they can pull up uh, on ABTN, uh, their website, I think. They yeah. can pull it up. They do still show it uh, at various times. So you have to you know, kind of watch for it. And it also is shown uh, throughout the United States on PBS. That's what I was going to say. Not only amazing. is this Arkansas PBS, this is all across and the it, country. And it has, what is so funny, it has one state, national, and two different international awards. Really? That's, that's well, it's fantastic. Well, we are, we in Hot Springs should just be so, and are so proud uh, that you are from here and that you this beautiful labor and love uh, documenting your your journey with the trees. Well, it's a result of a lot of people that have joined in that also love the trees. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I just have to say it's a result of many people joining in wow. with this. Incredible. Now, this tree is uh, next to the river in Van Buren, uh, Arkansas, Fort Smith. And then Van Buren is very close to Fort Smith. And I, in working with these trees, sometimes I have different names for them. Mm -hmm. This one I call the elephant tree. Oh, I can and do you that. Can see, yes, I can absolutely an see the elephant right there. And now you said you photographed them. So mm -hmm. you photographed them and then came back. Did you do sketches at all when you went out to see not, them? Not usually. I'll make notes and sometimes color notes. But the photographs I take, I may take. 40 or 50 different photographs from the one tree, uh, very close ups. And then when I come back, I can kind of put it together to form the, uh, the composition because I want to get close up so that I can see the, the, the trunks and what's going on with the leaves and everything like that. So just one photograph. Well, do it. well, in the detail from the uh, Prismacolor, I, I think, is so much more detailed than a photo would be. That you just see, I saw um, it's in one of the birding books, you know, for people who enjoy birding. Mm -hmm. The bird, the most, one of the most popular ones is using color pencils instead of photos because you see more detail in the. You can, and that was one of the selected the prism, the colored pencil to work with for this project because I wanted to be able to get that detail. I wanted to be able to get the uh, delicate feel of the leaves and also the color. You can really get natural colors with the color pencils because they're transparent. So you, you work color over color and um, develop that. Well, this is a very special tree because two years ago it was designated as the national champion American holly, which means because there is a, nat a national fig tree list, it means it is the largest American holly tree on record in the United States. That's incredible. And now you talked about the history of these trees and when you went out to visit them. This is one that when I saw the film that really stood out to me. Now, will you tell me the history of this tree? Well, this is something uh, when AETN started on the documentary, they located two sisters that grew up with this tree and interviewed them and they had a photograph of the tree when it was about four feet tall that they had planted. So they had that wonderful history I didn't have. Uh, when I photographed the tree, I just, 
you know, located the tree. I was happened to be on my own that day and photographed it, but I could not believe that a holly tree was that big. I'd never seen a holly. So, you think yeah. about holly trees usually as large like, bush. Yeah, a shrub. An overgrown a shrub. shrub. Yes. <laughs> but this one was amazing. But the women, the two sisters that they interviewed were just wonderful and memorable. We absolutely and love this tree. And they have both passed away. Oh, really? So mm -hmm. what a wonderful Mm -hmm. to capture their story mm -hmm. and have it attached to this mm -hmm. tree. Now, all of the detail that we can see in the trunk of this tree. Now, what time of day do you photograph trees normally when you're going Different to times of the day, but I really like uh, when the light is coming down on the branches, which you can see the, pat the light patterns. But sometimes I have no control over the time of day because it's just when you're traveling all over the state mm -hmm. sometimes you can't get there as early as you would like to mm -hmm. early morning would be wonderful sometimes i like late in the afternoon when the lighting is getting real interesting so i like the play of light on, on the phone This is a very, very early work of mine, but one that I have really enjoyed through the years. And it's called Sunlight on the Rocks. It's just uh, graphite. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I like about it, it's very realistic, but it's very abstract. Yeah. So there's this play of abstract against the realistic. And I like to do that with my work. Well, it's beautiful. And such a contrast. You use the, the vibrant greens and yellows mm -hmm. and brown. Mm -hmm. And then those very, this, yeah. Where were, where were this? This is actually in Colorado. Oh, okay. And it was a, a rock slide. But as you can see, the sun was shining on it. And so there was a very strong contrast, which I love, of the, the shadows and the light. Almost looks like glaciers too. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, here's oh, here we here's are. The tree the, house, the tree house, and the sycamore, um, which the photograph that I took uh, when I took it was probably four years ago, and I loved it, and I enlarged it. Uh, so that I could work from it, but then I put it back and I started doing other things. But during COVID, I was going through my my stash, you might say, and found this, and I thought, oh, I, I wanted to do this one, and I have time. I'm here at home, basically. <laughs> uh, so I started working on it. But now when I drive by and see it from the road, you can tell uh, that it has deteriorated a little bit. Uh, so it has changed, but I captured it when it was a little, you know, in better shape. Yes. I'd say. Well, and now, like with this one, the trees are bare. So did you purposely decide to take the photo, to approach them and take the photo when it was bare as opposed to when there were... Oh, blooms? yes, yeah. because, uh, well, I love bare trees because I love the uh, composition of the limbs against the sky the negative spaces of the sky and everything that you can you can work with with just the branches and trunks of a tree and but a real bonus that happened when i started working on it i was looking at it a little closer and i go oh look it has the little not berries but the little uh, yeah, seeds. I See, guess. Okay, I was wondering on, what is yes, that? Yes, yeah. that's what it is, and that was such, and that was fun. I thought, oh, look at that. That's a, a little bonus. A little bonus. There. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And now you mentioned that you saw this down driving down the road. Now, do you think being an artist changes how you see the world? Definitely, definitely, because um, you know, well, if you notice things. You notice the light, you notice the play of uh, a trunk against the sky um, because your eye, and the more you work as an artist, your eye is constantly doing that. 
sometimes if it's a very bright, strong day and strong colors, it almost overwhelms them. Wow. <laughs> The, how the artist sees the world versus how the rest of us see the world. Uh, I love, and this is the perfect name for this too, Dancing Trees. Okay, obvious, but do you name the tree when you before you start it, or the, the, not the trees, but the painting, or does it just kind of It just together? depends. Uh, this was a whole series that I did. These are actually uh, trees that, are, that grow in Texas and uh, had been to visit the Benini oh. and photograph some trees around their place. Uh, and these trees grow in clumps mm -hmm. and they're, and so just looking at them, it was just like they were dancing together. So I did a whole series of dancing trees. This is the only one that I still have and I finished recently, but uh, yeah. Now, are these, is it full size trees or because from looking at this, it's hard to tell if it's, you know, just the trunks of a, of a smaller, a smaller bush. They or? were, oh no, they're trees. they're trees. They're fairly small. They're not large, large trees, but, uh, but these, yeah, they can get pretty good size, but they are in little clumps like that and, and they have movement. They're right. moving. And I don't know. I think it's that, and I'm not even sure what type of tree this is, I have to say. They're dancing trees. But they're dancing trees. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the most beautiful trees um, that's so on the whole list. It's the, and it's a triptych. That's why you see the, the three different uh, uh, pieces. And it's the cherry bark oak. Um, it's an Alexa, and it's still standing, and it's in a pasture all by itself. So it has been allowed to to grow and develop without being hemmed in by other trees or anything else. And so the branches go. I don't even you know. I'm not even showing the whole tree, but the branches, as you can see, go almost all the way to the ground. Just beautiful. I have photographed it in uh, every season. I chose the fall season because I love the colors uh, to work with, but I have drawn this tree. I have made quite a few drawings of this tree uh, with the more of the summer leaves, and I have also created a drawing of it in the winter without leaves. So it is. Uh, really beautiful. It's still there. It's still flourishing. Many of the trees, I started this project in 2007, believe it or not. So many of the trees on the list at that time, uh, many of them have died from age or strong winds have come by. Tornadoes have gotten some. Even a few have been cut down. Which just is heartbreaking. That, that but, is heartbreaking. But I was told, as said, now by a forester that trees have a lifespan, right. just yeah. as we do. Yeah. And they do age, and they do start losing their limbs. And but we have found out more and more. Uh, science has uh, that when they do die, and as they go back into the ground, they basically um, help fertilize and go back into the ground for the other trees around them. They oh, feed them. Beautiful. It's a real interesting process. So, now, are most of the trees that you, the champion trees, are they by themselves? Or they no, no, no. They're everywhere. They may be in a park. They, uh, many of them are in, in cemeteries. Mm -hmm. um, they're back in the forest. They're in people's yards. They're all over the state. And do they all have to be native species? Yes. Oh, no, no, they do not. They don't. No, because the Ginkgo well, is okay. one of the favorites. Yeah. And of course, no. Yeah. Well, here's one of our natives, though, the flowering dogwood. Oh, this one is so beautiful. This is the only one that I did that's just primarily graphite. 
and a very little color. The color doesn't show up in here, but tiny color on the uh, the blossoms. But I just felt like that's how I saw it when right. I started it. So, uh, and it is one of one of my favorites. This tree, I'm trying. To, I don't even remember the exact town where this tree is. But when I, I called um, and talked to the lady and asked if I could come and photograph it. And my friend Linda Cass came with me that day and we photographed a couple of different trees in different places. But I could not believe the size of this tree when I saw it. The trunk of it, which you don't, you know, don't see in this, but um, was as large as as just a regular tree. Oh wow! And it's just a normal and it's native. Uh, uh, yeah, that was in the yard. Uh, the house, the lady said, was about forty years old. So she knew it was at least forty years old, but probably older. Who right. knows? But the sad thing about this tree is, anytime I'm in an area where there's a champion tree, I, I revisit just to see how they're doing. This one, I drove down the street and I thought, well, where is it? Where is it? And I looked over. They had mistakenly let someone prune this wonderful tree and they cut it back. It, it oh. was massacred. It was just massacred. And I have been afraid to even check on it these last few years because I knew it would kill it. They topped it, they cut the main branches off, just like, kind of like the picture, these large branches were just sawed off, just straight, and they topped it, which is the no-no that you do, right. you do not top trees. Uh, so it's very sad, and uh, I do have um, a chapter in my book about the importance of proper pruning trees. That that is important. That um, now would it be removed from the champion trees if they if it um, gets chopped? Like as that? well, of course, it did. The it did uh, lessen the size of it because they measured the trunk, and then they will measure the uh, the dimensions from one side to the other, mm -hmm. the tip of the branches to the other, and the height. So yes, it would, but the trunk was so large that uh, I need to, to double check and see, um, because it remained a champion for quite a few years. It was that large. Well, because usually there are these delicate little, yes. little, little mm -hmm. trees back mm -hmm. in the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the majestic ginkgo. This is um, a favorite. So many people love this ginkgo, and it's in Helena. Actually, the um, cemetery, the very historic cemetery that was a battleground, and uh, this tree is there. And interesting enough, the daughter of the woman that was a friend of mine that took me out to show me where this tree was just recently contacted me and bought not this particular drawing but another drawing that i had done of this tree because it was so important to their family history and they wanted this in their family because I originally photographed this in the spring, mm -hmm. and so I told their mother, I said, now, if you all will, let me know when it turns golden, because I know that's how I want to create the drawing yeah. of this tree. And she ca finally called me one fall, and she said, it's ready, you need to come out, you know, yeah. as fast as you can. Yeah. And she said, my family has taken turns going out and checking on this tree. Oh, so this woman was the daughter that had gone out and checked on this tree for me probably in around 2007, 2008. Oh, wow. So now on the trees, do you make, you mentioned that, 
do you go back and take have you ever gone oh that's not the right the, the right time of year or that's not oh, right. to go back out i will go back out yes now this one uh is no longer the champion oh wow. the new really? champion the new champion uh which took over a, a few years ago is actually in time block and i had photographed it mm -hmm. i have uh so and it's a younger tree and it is larger now than this one because being a younger tree, it has grown fast and, yeah. and gotten much bigger and it's healthier. This one is very old, as you can see the yes. trunk and the, it's so it's aging, so it's diminishing. And with the champion trees, it's like anything else, you know. Catch. If there's a bigger one, it takes yeah. it becomes yeah, exactly. a champion. <laughs> So, now, do you have any advice for students or any, any, not even necessarily students, anyone interested in um, in drawing trees? Do you do as far as the as so far as drawing trees, it's just like drawing anything else. I think of these as tree portraits. Right. Yes. Um, and it's all about your basic drawing. Um, uh, your composition, your contrast, and everything else. So if and uh, the thing to do is just go out and see the trees and get familiar with them. Find one that you think is particularly interesting and start, you know, start drawing it or painting it or whatever, whatever you want to do. And now the first ones that you did of the tree of the series of trees were they smaller? I see like this one's twenty two by thirty, but many of them are huge. This one is. There are three that are about this size. The rest of them are very large. Uh, they're big trees. They are. Yeah, and I felt that if I was going to do their portrait, I should do them justice and do them as large as I could. <laughs> Absolutely. So, now, do you still have this one? Is this one? No, I actually gave this one uh, to Dorothy Morris for oh. everything that she did with the documentary and it, uh, and this. And I happen she didn't ask for it, of course, but I happen to know this one was her favorite. It is it's so. It's, it's, in, it her is just it like is it's in her collection. Just it is in her collection. But here, this one is. Uh, and this my one, favorite. yes, is. The largest one that I did, 55 inches by 38. Wow. It's almost the size of that door. I should say that that's so much about, taller than you are. Oh, You're yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yes. Um, and it's the short leaf pine. And um, it at the time was the national short leaf pine, which was the largest uh, in the United States. The second largest was in Texas, and this one happened to be, oh, like three points larger or so oh, wow. than the one in Texas. But what happened to this one, which is really sad, about three, four years ago, strong winds came oh. through and snapped it in two. <gasps> so, you know, that happens. Right. Um, when I photographed this one, you, you know, you know pines here. They're yeah. just very tall, straight, and stuff at the top. Right. And so in photographing it, I'm thinking, what in the world can I do with this to make an interesting drawing, right. uh, you know, of this tree? And then I thought about uh, Georgia O'Keeffe's tree that she did, uh, the Jacob tree, I think, looking up into the tree, into the sky. And so I got under it when I was photographing it, almost fell backwards, <laughs> taking taking that view up. And this is how I wanted to present it, that it be hung high and people come up and look up into that tree. Uh, UAMS has purchased that tree and I'm not sure where it's hung. But it is there. Uh, four of my champion trees happen to be there at UAMS. And now this one is on the cover of the book. Yes. So now 
the, does the book have all of the trees in it? Or it's a nice, beautiful hardback book. Yes, the book has the 17 original uh, champion trees in it uh, that were in the, the traveling exhibit. Mm -hmm. uh, I have completed quite a few more uh, since the book was done, but this does have not only the large drawing, but the small drawing uh, of the leaves. The because details, you did, a you did two, at least two drawings of mm -hmm. each of the trees, mm -hmm. that's correct. You did the large and then... And then the detail. Because I wanted to really show the close-up of the leaves of each tree. Well, and um, like this one's so interesting because you get the, that detail of the texture of the trunk. Oh, that... It, anyone that looks at, really, if you really look, Pine trunks. They're just amazing. And so I really had fun with this, with the the detail and the different colors. Mm -hmm. When you start looking at all the wonderful colors. Uh, so yeah, well, I'm gonna start really trying fun. to look at things differently now, looking okay. at all the colors and that <laughs> Gary Simmons is a good friend of ours and he always talks about, you know, the how the, the trees look black when it's when, the, when they're wet, wet. yes, mm -hmm. or when the sun's setting or the light's mm -hmm. getting low, it looks like. So I'm going to start looking at the colors of trees. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I was traveling with Dorothy one day, and it was winter, and she was talking about, oh, how sad, you know, that it was winter, and the colors weren't there. And I said, oh, Dorothy, wait a minute, look. And there are these wonderful browns and mauves and grays and, and she said oh, i never thought that they now are, i see uh, them now yes. i see them because because the winter trees are amazing they're beautiful okay i'll look at things okay. with a different eye now <laughs> oh okay and this is i love the golden this, this is, is a close-up yes of the the branch and of course the little pine cones no. That and so this is the short leaf pine, that same short leaf mm -hmm, pine, mm -hmm. and it is not that size. It is oh. a smaller size. Okay, sorry, so, I well, must have. You yeah. probably didn't do that. Uh, it's like uh, I think it was the the small ones were eight by ten. Oh, okay, okay. And this was one that I did of a hackberry, and I renamed this in my mind as the misunderstood tree because so many people say oh, it's not worth anything just cut it down they're ugly trees this year tree was beautiful 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 well in the texture so, of the trunk on this one is it's again you, you see the play of light and shadows on this trunk and this was late afternoon which i, I really love shadows but then the colors of the leaves were pretty, I like that. And a very faint blue sky in the back. That is, now, where is this one? I don't remember. Oh, oops, and that's the last one. <laughs> and that's, one. The, last that's the last one. I can look it up. No, no I don't remember. That is, okay, now, are there any trees that you haven't painted yet that are still on your list? Yes. Really? Yes. There's a oh, there's a type of fir tree that is a champion that's here in Hot Springs. Oh, that I want in to Hot do. Springs. Yes, yes, yes. And I had driven by to see it, and I I just haven't done it yet, but I do. Where in Hot Springs is it located? We'll have to look it up. What's the website that we look it up on? What's the Champion Trees on uh, the uh, Arkansas Forestry Commission website. Okay, so we can all, and for those of you who are out there who are artists, I just want to challenge all of you to go take pictures of trees. That's wonderful. So if, if it's something you love, right? Yeah, right. That, yeah, I think that's very important. If it and and people have asked me at first, they said, "Well, who hired you to do that? Why did you do that?" And I said, "I did it for me." because that's my love and that's my interest. And I was fortunate enough that I could take off the time to hunt these down and work on it and, and because that's what I wanted to do. But the old thing about artists, follow your own 
you know, your own interest and your own love. That's what I would uh, now, which one, which tree is your favorite? Which oh. one is your baby? You okay, get? now you you being a mother will understand this. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no way that you can choose between your favorites. Uh, the trees are like my children in a way, the, the drawings. Uh, and I do have different favorites for different reasons. Maybe I like the composition of one better or the colors in one a little better or different things like that, but they are special each in their own way. Now and that's what I wanted to to do was when I was working on the tree was to think of it as what makes this tree special. You know, so that's why I think of it as a portrait. And um, so are there any that you kept? Uh, yes. Yes. So yes. you did really not. Uh, I have sold most of them. I have one that's at the gallery right now that I probably will keep. I have an early one that I did that was not a champion tree, but it was a forest that I have kept. Uh, my family has, of course, they all love art, and they have some of them favorite ones that I've done so but when I finished with you know with the drawing the trees I'm through with my art and I love what I had read years ago and it said a work of art is not complete until the viewer responds to what the artist is saying now I want to flip it on you just a little okay. bit what artists are, what artists do you collect? Oh, I'm sure you have your own artwork hanging on your walls, but who I have you? very, I think I may have one, two, three of mine hanging. I've collected art ever since I started taking art at West Art Community College. The students, we none of us had any money to buy the art. But we would trade, we um, would collect each. So I have wonderful collections of the students that I studied with at the time. But then moving here and opening the gallery, I really had a wonderful opportunity to start collecting work that of artists that I represented. And then I'm still collecting, I'm still buying art. Uh, and not. And I have a very eclectic collection. I love good art. I mean, it can be, or art that speaks to me, it can be abstract, it can be very, you know, very representative. It's just all over the world. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That's all over the map. I guess. That's one of my favorite things to do though on vacation is to go see the galleries and to buy a piece of art because mm -hmm. it hangs on your wall and you have a memory yeah. attached to that piece right. of art. Right. And I have done that in travels. Um, and then I have a, a wonderful art uh, art book collection also right. because every time I would you know, a visit a museum or something. I have uh, an, an amazing library. Well, and that's something that even if you can't afford, you know, someone just starting out, if you can't afford to purchase art, um, you can collect the books. You can go to the library and check mm -hmm. out the books of art mm -hmm. and experience different museums that we could never travel to here in, you know, from mm -hmm. Hot Springs or, mm -hmm. or most people could not. Um, but you can also buy art from people just starting out who are and I have, who are wonderful, right? And I have done that. I have quite a few, um, uh, a lot of Arkansas artists, mm -hmm. of course, that I've collected through the years. So uh, and just happened. I'll tell this. Uh, I don't think you'll be watching. Uh -huh. I just I fell in love with Gary Simmons' bird. The oh. little and so I just Oh, wonderful. Uh, the yeah. bird nests, which are just amazing. So people will see them 
Friday night. Right. Because he yes. is being featured is one of the featured artists and they are they're just amazing. I, I've seen some of the photos and they oh, are exquisite. Great. Yes, I, I know. I'm excited to go yeah, see them too. So. I might make it over to Justice Gallery before mm -hmm. um, before Friday night even to check them out. So um, I hope he isn't watching because we wanted it to be a surprise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well and, and maybe he is. Is it he, if he is, is, it is, yeah. Yes, but you can stop by and see Linda. Will you be at the gallery on a Friday night? Or I am have to be in Fort Smith. Okay, well, but so Gary I miss it. But Gary I know will Gary be will be in the gallery. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So um, we will. Um, that that kind of wraps us up. And uh, the last slide here talks about Arts in the Park. It has the dates there. Um, now, but I want for Arts in the Park. The, the website is hotspringsarts.org. But now, how could someone find you, Linda? LindaWilliamsPalmer.com. LindaWilliamsPalmer.com. That's mm -hmm. an easy one. That's website. my website. Okay. So, and if you want to see some in person here in Hot Springs, of course, Justice Gallery. But long years after we're 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 recording this, Linda, we can people can still go back on the gallery or the. Uh, library's um, youtube page and watch this interview so Yay. yeah so they can look yeah, up linda williams palmer.com <laughs> and if anybody missed it tonight you can share it with your friends and for those of you who are watching tonight um you can um, let your friends know that after tomorrow they can can go back and catch the interview and of course can go out to gallery walk and um i'm leaving this slide up there for a minute hoping everyone will write down the dates and one just for anyone watching this this evening before before arts in the park we're putting the program together the end within the next couple of weeks and if you have any arts programming that will be going on between april 29th and may 8th we certainly want to include that in our calendar um, we have art moves opening um, on april 28th which is the exhibit down along the hot springs creek greenway trail which will feature 15 pieces of artwork um, some amazing submissions i'm really excited about this year's um, creative roots theme um, we will have an outdoor arts festival with children's events and artists and live music um, different events taking place all week long for 10 days the closing weekend of Arts in the Park, of course, will feature Gallery Walk because it's the first Friday of the month. And then studio tours where um, artists all around the Hot Springs area actually open up their private studio and let the artists come in or, and let the public come in and uh, check it out and see where, where they create their artwork. So we'll have a mural going up. Um, we have Quaqua dancers coming um, during Art Springs that opening weekend and an exhibit of the work of Mike this farmer. So um, Arkansas photographer that has become so renowned for mm -hmm. his um, photography that will be at the Hot Springs Convention Center. So Paul, um, I think we we have wrapped it up. Are there any questions? Well, that was excellent as always. Uh, learned a lot of myself there. Um, Champion trees, not something I realized existed either, but how many, uh, we'll go to the site and see where they're all at, but how many does Hot Springs have? Right now, I think they have one, two, perhaps three, but it's ever changing. And uh, so people just need to go to the site, check it out and, and see. Excellent. Well, uh, th this was very enjoyable, and uh, like Mary said a moment ago, this um, is recorded, so if you tuned in late or um, missed any of it, you you'll be able to watch this on Facebook and YouTube on the library's channels, and as well as the other 12 episodes. Like I said, this is episode 13, which is pretty incredible. <laughs> Number 13. <laughs> well, th this was a lucky one. Yes, I think so, too. <laughs> Yes. And as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, the library has just opened registration for Richard Stevens Watercolor Workshop. Uh, that is a three day commitment, as you can see there on the screen. Just give the library a call or go to our website for more details. And Mary just talked about Arts in the Park. The library will be collaborating and we have uh, some programs to announce in the future. But one thing that we have already sent out invitations for is for Local Author Day, which is on May 4th, Wednesday, May 4th, 
uh, we have a list of contacts with local authors and, and you should have received an invitation if you're already on that list so check your email but if you haven't then uh, contact the library and we'll send you an invite if you are an author for the general public you're welcome to come and meet and greet with the authors on that day without having to sign up anything else any other orders of business to discuss i don't think so do we leave anything out with i don't think we did i think we covered it thank you so much paul and again hotspringsarts.org so that you can find out all about what's happening during arts in the park all right. Well, thank you both of you for a great program and thank you audience for watching. Have yes. Come out to gallery walk Friday night and, and check out all the chairs. It'll be a fun event. Mm -hmm.